So, but I'll just kind of move along here with the lesson. Um, holy crap. So what we have is x to the fifth plus 2x cubed plus x. So what I did is I asked you guys to solve this by factoring. So what we want to do for a problem like this is obviously look for the GCF, which I didn't do, Brooke, as you mentioned out like first. You should always look for factoring. Always factor out the GCF. So I say in this form I could factor out an x. Therefore, I'm left with x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. All right, but before I can even apply a zero product property, I want to say, can I factor this even further, right? So I can say x times, um, let's see here, let's write this as, see if I can factor this as two binomials. I'm not going to go through the long factoring process, but I know that the first two terms have to be x squared times x squared. The last two numbers have to give me one, so they have to either be both positive ones or both negative ones. But since they have to add up to a positive two, I know that they're both going to be plus one. Right? So this ends up being x plus 1, or x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1 times x. Ladies and gentlemen, these are what we call the factors. Right? Because this times this times this gives us this problem. Right? That's why we solve, when we solve by factoring, we say factoring. Factoring, all it is is breaking a polynomial down to, two, down to more binomials or polynomials that multiply to give you your original polynomial. Right? So the next step to solving by factoring is now we need to apply the zero product property. Because, we, because once we have one value times another value, and even times another value, that equals zero, we know that one of these values have to equal zero. So we say x equals zero. We could say x squared plus 1 equals zero. And x squared plus 1 equals zero. Now, we're going to get into a little bit different, but we notice this is the same thing, right? This is, these are both the same. So we don't need to do it twice. Um, but we're going to learn a little bit about what happens when we have factors that look in that form. But for right now, we just have x equals 0. And then we have x squared plus 1 equals 0. Now, to solve, subtract 1. And therefore, you have x squared equals negative 1. Then we take the square root. And therefore, you have x equals plus or minus um, i. Right, because remember the square root of negative one we represent as i. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we have now is when I say solve, you can say x has to equal then zero, i, or negative i. Right, these are the values that when we set equal to zero, that those are the values of x. These are what we call our zeros. Okay, so these are what we call our zeros. So we go zeros to factors. Now let's take a look here. How do our factors relate to our zeros? Well, once we factor a polynomial, we set each factor into 0, and that's what we use as our zeros. All right? Kind of make a little bit of sense, kind of, what we have. So factors to zeros of your equation. All right? That's the first step. Um,